Hello and welcome to another Game Nexus Arcade video. Today we're going to be taking a look at, as you can see here, Dead or Alive 2 for the Sega Naomi. This is of course currently running on my Sega Naomi 2. Now if you have a Sega Naomi and you don't know about this, I actually found this out by accident, but there's a kind of weird code that you can do if you want to see like your boot ROM version. Uh, press the button that moves the uh, indicator here make it go like all the way down the menu a few times and then eventually after like I think about four or five times notice how now it says Naomi 2 game boot ROM version 2.01 I, I forget why I had done it one time but I had actually just gone up and down there a few times and um sure enough on my American one it says uh, 1.6 but since this is the Japanese BIOS it says uh that it's running on 2.01, so I'm guessing it's a later BIOS, because these are the uh, final C BIOS. Just going to take you into the game test mode here for a second, just to show you that it has a uh, one of the promotional renders of Kasumi on it. Takes a minute or two to load, because it has to load this image. There we are. Camera takes a second to focus. But the cool part is you can actually move this with your controls as opposed to having to use the uh, the service button and test button because that can be a, a little bit uh, hard because you have to like lean over and do that. But no real big deal. But let's see here. Just your normal like uh, different options and everything like changing settings for story mode. Now I can honestly tell you I have no idea what Nation does at all. I've never seen any difference between USA Export or Japan. Yeah, we'll just put it on USA even though we are using Japanese BIOS, but the weird part is you'd think that USA would actually make it um, have English uh, voices, but it does not. But you'll see here, as I'd mentioned uh, three years ago in the uh, in the uh, Dead or Alive uh, series video about this where I played it poorly on an emulator, uh, you can actually freely open and close survival in tag mode here. So we're just going to exit out of here. But in the original Dead or Alive cartridge, this is the Millennium version. Uh, you had to input weird, uh, weird uh, operator codes, and you can clear all your ranking and everything, and even listen to the sound test here. So I could go and change my system voice volume, my BGM volume. I can change it from mono to stereo, and you see I can play some BGM here. I don't know why the BGM option for Zach was KL. I can see T for T T I for Tina. Lou for for uh Jan Lee. Maybe these are just their codes for like the system, which is kinda weird. But I've taken up way too much of the time. Now I don't recall if I mentioned this in the video I did three years ago, but this version is most uh, similar to the um, original Dreamcast version f for uh, North America. And since this is a uh, Naomi cartridge, it doesn't require the uh, excessive uh, load time that the uh, GD-ROM games do. Now in this part here, it's checking to see if your uh, I.O. board's okay. If uh, there's any problem with the I.O. board, or if of course the I.O. board is either not powered by the JAMA harness or not present, it will display a message here saying cannot find I.O. board and therefore you cannot play the game. Because I, I remember some people trying to get this to work, like in a home setting, like I have mine hooked up, and they didn't even have an I.O. board so they couldn't even play it. This is one of the only games I know that has a test like this. But now that it's loaded the game, we're going to get right into this. And unlike the home versions, it doesn't display that thunder thing that it used to do where it said Tecmo Creative Team. And we're going to take a look at two intros here. They're both slightly different, so enjoy this.
And as you can see there, there were two slightly different intros. I guess they figured with the home version, they didn't really want to do a, uh, uh, like, two different intros like that. So they kind of just um, put them both into uh, one big intro. Which makes a lot more sense, because a lot of people aren't even going to uh, figure out that you have two different intros. And now I know in my... Uh, in my Dead or Alive series video, I actually had stated the uh, code to get the schoolgirl costumes a bit wrong. Now, it doesn't matter anything about when you insert the coin or anything like that. As long as you're holding the punch and kick buttons when you press start, you'll notice the screen kind of does this like freeze for like a second or two, and that's how you know you did it right. And then the schoolgirl costumes, costume number three for Ayane and costume number four for Kasumi will then be selectable. Strangely enough, that's the only way to get them. They're not time-released or anything. It's just kind of something you have to know. But the only thing I have to say about um, the arcade version uh, versus the uh, home versions that's a bit different is with the home versions, what it'll do is it actually maps like uh, punch and free to a button, which is typically referred to as the throw button. And then the... Uh, the counters are done completely differently from what I understand, which I still haven't ever uh, gotten down. Eventually, I'll probably post a video if I get the uh, counters down, because they're done a lot differently. But, like, uh, tagging in and out in tag mode is all three buttons, punch, kick, and free. And, of course, you'll notice, as opposed to my... Um, as opposed to my uh, Dead or Alive series review uh, for the Dead or Alive uh, arcade version for Dead or Alive 2. When you get into the cutscenes there, you're not missing geometry because this is not running on an emulator. This is running on the actual real hardware, so uh, you don't have to deal with any problems that'd be caused by silly emulation glitches. Because the real sad part is, uh, even though... Uh, even though the emulators are pretty accurate, they're just not as, like, accurate as, say, having, having the real hardware. So, uh, uh, finally really good to have this game and be able to play the full arcade version at home. Although, don't get me wrong, I do have to admit, you either have to be a big arcade fan or a big Dead or Alive fan to really, like, spring for their actual hardware or even the arcade machines because... Uh, really, there is no, uh, there's no real big thing to drive you to get it if you're just, like, a casual player.
And now since this is a single player match, uh, the danger zone will actually move, whereas in tag mode, the danger zone doesn't move at all, it just stays stationary. So, uh, that's one thing that's a little bit different. I believe in the, uh, Dead or Alive 3 for Xbox, the danger zone still moves if you're in a tag match, but then again, they wanted to show off, uh, the quote-unquote power of X, so that's why they really, uh, did that. And now, when I was playing this match, I didn't even realize, like, we were coming into the part that like, caves in. Because I can honestly tell you, I haven't played this arcade version all that much. See, we didn't fall off the edge, it just caved in and we both fell into the ground here. And now when I was playing this here, you'll notice I keep trying to get Kasumi away from me because I want that uh, that cutscene that's in the intro to happen, but sadly, no matter how, how hard I tried to get her away from me, I couldn't do it. So, um... She had to be a little bit further away. So, um... I couldn't actually get that uh, trailer to happen, that actual uh, extra cutscene, because what would have happened is, instead of having the replay and then her saying, uh, traitor, it would have just went right into that cutscene without even bothering with a, uh, replay. And now, this is one of the only matches I end up ended up actually losing except for Helena early on. So what I actually had to do here is I, I cut out a bunch of my losses because I just didn't want to make this already long video to be much longer. So I just um, cut the video a little short so in a second here it's going to jump cut a bit. What's really funny, I, I know I probably mentioned this in the Dead or Alive series of videos, but I would just think this is funny, but in the English dub, when you're playing Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore, either American or Japanese version, uh, in that part with the English voices, you hear uh, Ein go, I'm coming. And she's like, why? I, it, it just seems a little bit funny when you hear that, because it sounds like they're really talking to each other. And now one difference I can tell you here that is not in the home version is now when he's about to jump off the thing, the music doesn't start as soon as you see him, it starts when he lands. Now you'll see right here. It starts when the match starts, instead of uh... The music starting when he's up on the tree and he's jumping down. And that's a kind of a small difference in the arcade version as opposed to the home version. And now that whole thing with uh, the the stage going all like uh, foggy and messed up like in the uh, PlayStation 2 version was only in the PlayStation 2 version. None of the Dreamcast versions or arcade versions actually had that. So they only added that because they were like, oh, this... PlayStation 2 has all this amazing power and effects. Let's add something. I guess they figured you make it all foggy and it's a delusion. Now what's strange is in the original uh, Dreamcast and home versions, she says something like, uh, Behold, I am the Miyama's woman Tangu. Whereas in Dead or Alive 2 uh, Ultimate, she says, Behold, this is how you defeat a Tengu. Now, which one is the correct translation? I'm still honestly not sure at this point. I can honestly say, considering how like different some of the subtitles are in the Ultimate version, I honestly think they, they just like changed them because they wanted them to make more like sense. Instead of like a character cut, walking out in the field and going, Hey, look, I'm me and stuff. They figure they would make it a bit more of a context-based thing that this character would say, so uh, they wouldn't just spout some random line. 
And I know I had mentioned it in the Dreamcast version uh, video that I'd done way back when, but just like in that, uh, Tengu's name was in is in Japanese as well here. And um, in every version that came after some of the earlier versions, instead of having that uh, those three uh, katakana symbols there, it would just say Tengu. And now instead of cutting this video short here, I figured uh, we would uh, take a look at a quick tag mode here. And I don't know if you noticed that really quick, that like, quick freeze in the video. Now I remember when I was actually playing this, I hadn't decided what tag team I was going to be. But, um, in doing this footage, I had learned real quick that, uh, Kasumi and Ayn do not have their uh, tag moves like they did in later versions of the game. They they haven't been made at this point. And if you look in the background, you notice just as I had said, the uh, danger zone does not move in tag mode. And that's probably just the limit of uh, this particular version of the game, which had carried over to the Dreamcast version. I guess they just wanted to make it uh, run nice and smooth and not have any lag when you have four characters loaded into memory at any given time. And of course, if you had played any of the later versions of Dead or Alive 2, you'll know that they added a bunch more uh, tag stages. But the only tag stage that you get in the early version, like the arcade version or any of the Dreamcast versions, is just the Danger Zone. It was only in the PlayStation 2 versions that they started adding more tag stages, which were specially made for tag mode. Now another strange side fact, if you're any character who doesn't have a special like win pose with Kasumi, and um, when you win, Kasumi is the second character, she's not the character who actually won the match. In this version and the North American Dreamcast version, Kasumi will always go uh, Gomenasai Daijovu, whereas any version after the American uh, Dreamcast version, they changed what she said into like, uh, this is Mugen Tension style or something to that extent. But I just find it weird that like, this version and the first... Yeah, I believe that's actually the phrase that they changed it to in just about every other version if she's the second player. But I just find it funny that in this and the original uh, Dreamcast version, she always goes, uh, Go Menasai Dai Jovu, and she sounds really sad when she says it too. Which, if you're not uh, too familiar with uh, your Japanese, uh, that actually translates to, I'm sorry, are you okay? So I guess she's feeling like, uh, sorry that she had, uh, beat up whoever she just, uh, bested. But it, just a little interesting side fact there. So if you have a, uh, Dreamcast version of, uh, Dead or Alive 2, the, uh, North American original release, you might want to fire it up if you want to check that out real quick and win a tag match with any other character and have Kasumi be the second partner. And that's exactly what you'll see her, like, cowering in the corner like that. And I remember when I first played this game, I always thought it was cool how the, how the life meters do that thing where they spin. It's a, it's a silly little effect, but it's just something that's really cool. And one thing I definitely have to say after playing a, a bit of the uh, uh, arcade version, it seems like when the uh, things on the wall explode, they tend to say they exploded a little bit longer, whereas on the home versions of the game, they just tend to be like fixed a lot quicker, which is kind of weird. And they seem to explode more, and there seems to be more like um, blackness around there. And you notice just a little while ago there, um, I tried to do a tag move with Ayn and Kasumi, and um, they didn't actually do a tag move, they just do the did the ones where they throw the character behind them and then, then the other character does the move.
And that's another place where I'd lost a lot, so I just cut out all my losses because I didn't want to make this video much longer than it really had to be. But yeah, that's Dead or Alive uh, 2, the arcade version. Dead or Alive 2 Millennium. Highly recommended for hardcore Dead or Alive or arcade uh, Sega Naomi collectors. But uh, really not, not something that you would really go after if you're not any of those two persuasions. It's just kind of a curiosity for the rest of everyone here. But this has been another Game Nexus Arcade video and another Game Nexus Dead or Alive video. And I shall see you later. Bye.